in the car for the final trip, running the battery close to, to zero. I've put the essential supplies in the boot just in case. It's not the sort of thing I would normally do, worry about running out, but uh, the difficult thing about doing this sort of test is when I get down to the last five or six miles, if I start to do a loop driving close to the house and I go uphill, the range of the car is going to show one mile or zero miles pretty fast because going uphill I'm only going to be getting two and a half, three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. It's the combination of when you come back downhill that you get the better efficiency. So I'm really not certain how those last five or six miles are going to go. And will it be squeaky bum moment? I'm hoping not. I'm hoping to try and judge my route so that I am at the top of a hill, you know, an incline, to get the last few miles going back home so that I can charge. But if something goes wrong and the range drops dramatically quickly, then uh, yeah, I, I could be stranded. So it's sensible. It's sensible, since I'm doing something not normal, to put an extension lead in the car just in case. I know there'll be some people that look at this video and think, oh, driving Miss Daisy again out, showing what a great big range number he can get on his car. And yeah, I, I do drive efficiently and I do drive slower than some. And I do like seeing high numbers on the GOM and getting good range. I like that sort of thing with the uh, electric car. I like playing the game, the numbers game. But, you know, there are people that when I'm doing 45 to 55 miles an hour, they're a couple of feet from the bumper. They're trying to push you to go a bit faster because those extra two minutes that they're going to have by going faster makes all the difference to them in their busy lives. And yeah, you know, I guess each to their own, but my view is you just need to chill and slow down a little. It's better for your safety, everyone's safety. It's better for the environment, even if you're in an electric car, just to calm that speed down a little bit and conserve some energy because wherever you get the energy from it's better to save a resource than just to consume it madly so yes i'm at i wouldn't say necessarily one extreme but i'm more towards the extreme of driving slowly than uh, some people are on how keen they are to well you, you know what i mean you've seen the people before you know they're right on your bumper and then they get fed up and they overtake in some area where it really shouldn't be overtaking and then you catch them up at the next roundabout anyway it's it is madness but everyone's different driving styles is really really different but the important thing to remember with this video test and about efficiency is i'm not demonstrating what you can get as efficiency in your car or your kona electric i'm demonstrating here the potential of the kona electric if you drive in similar circumstances to myself. You know, if you don't live in the countryside and you don't have country lanes to drive in, then you're not going to be driving as slow as me. If you live somewhere near the M6 and you're up and down the motorways all the time, you're more likely to be encouraged to be driving at 70 miles an hour plus all of the time to get somewhere. And you're probably not even doing it consciously. It's just keeping up with the flow of traffic. So depending on your routes, your roads nearby, and how you drive, and how you use the car, you're going to get different efficiency. Um, here in Norfolk, probably in the last <laughs> nearly two, yeah, two weeks that I haven't charged, I probably haven't been above 55 to 60 miles an hour. Um, I just haven't been on the roads where that sort of speed has been necessary. So of course my range and efficiency are going to look good, but that's not me hypermiling, that's not me trying to exaggerate these numbers. That's just me driving normally, that's me driving these normal roads in the normal way that I always do. And uh, okay, you know, I will confess that once I start seeing a big number, a, a high efficiency or a big range number, and you're doing a test like this, then yeah, you are encouraged to go, oh, I wonder if I could just slow down a little bit and get a little bit more. I wonder what number I could get. It, it does encourage you to do so. Obviously, if I'm not doing a test, then I really don't care and I just drive how I want to drive anyway. So I hope you understand that I'm not hypermiling, I'm not trying to get a huge number, and I'd like to say I'm not dissing those people that just want to drive like maniacs on the road, because, you know, I guess I am, I just don't understand it anymore. Um, it used to be me when, I'm, when I was young, but I've grown up now. I understand the safety issues and I do care about the environment a little bit more than I did before, so I just don't see the point anymore. Retiring, giving
picking up work has changed my attitude towards driving. It's quite surprising how when you're not on a time clock, you're just more relaxed and you enjoy your surroundings and enjoy the drive more and whether you're doing the speed limit is not important. Whether you are slowing someone down, yes, that is important. You know, I don't drive so slow that I'm in somebody's way, but if somebody's keen to do five miles an hour more than me, then, well, that's their problem, that's not mine. I can't believe after 18 months of owning this car that I haven't really done this in my own car before. I've only once driven um, a Kona Electric uh, more than 300 miles, and that was in one day, in one go. Um, to see whether it can do more than 300 mile range. And I went down to eight miles left, 3% uh, on the battery, and I started out with 96% on that day. I, I did do a video on that, but I haven't actually done that in my own car since. And it's, you know, I'm not like Bjorn Nyland. I don't do this for a job, and therefore I'm not out in cars every single day thinking, what test can I do next? I have to fit tests in and around my own lifestyle, so, when, when it fits and when I'm able to, then I'm able to do these things. And I try to report things that are relevant to normal life, that um, they're relevant to me, I'm thinking about them, so I'll do a test to present it. So anyway, uh, what I've done is filled the car up to 100% um, and then driven the car without charging and monitoring the, the trips, the mileage, the miles per kilowatt hour, and thanks to having an OBD2 reader in the car, I can see how many kilowatt hours I'm consuming and how many kilowatt hours I'm getting back in regen. So I'm actually able to measure the kilowatt hour size of the battery from 100% to 0% if I can get you know, as close to 0%. So I'm gonna find out how much battery I actually have, and that's the total of energy consumed less the total of energy regen. The net figure should give me the total capacity of the battery, the 64.2 kilowatt hours, that's what I'm expecting. So anything less than that, and I've got some degradation, I haven't got 64.2 kilowatt hours available to me to use. Anything more than that, well, that's an absolute bonus or makes you question some of the um, measurements, I guess, but that's what we're gonna see. You know, how close do I get? How much degradation on the battery have we got? And also, what efficiency do I get? And uh, yeah, what range do I get from one fill up to 100% down low? What miles am I going to drive? I will reiterate again, I have not done this test to try and maximize how many miles I can get on one charge. That was not the intention of the test. So even though, I'm, you know, spoiler alert, I'm gonna have a really big number, that was not my intention. Not initially anyway, probably when I got to around 40% on the battery, um, I realized how good a number it was going to be. So yeah, I'm driving a little bit more cautiously towards the end to try and make that a larger number as well. Yeah, I'm not hypermiling though. Um, I am not driving at 20 miles an hour anywhere. But yes, I am looking out for where to coast, where to regen, anticipating, but yeah, I do that stuff all the time anyway. So, you know, I do get good efficiency all the time from my general driving style. And right, okay, let's have a look. Uh, I'm just doing lap one, because I'm doing a lapped environment, and I've done seven miles less on the GOM, and that's a six and a half mile trip. So that's about right, and 6.2 miles per kilowatt hour, for that journey. Now what I've noticed is when I'm doing this sort of trip and I'm driving locally, if I do one loop, then the first one that I do doesn't get such good efficiency because the car's starting off from cold. And yes, the battery being warmed up slightly really does help with efficiency. So I'm expecting on the second or third lap that I do, um, the efficiency will creep up slightly. It also does make it does make me wonder about driving style, how to get the best efficiency out of the car, whether when you first drive the car, maybe it's really worth hammering it slightly and braking really hard, really hard you know, getting lots of regen to not warm the battery through the acceleration, but warm the battery through the regen. If you get a good 60, 80, 90 kilowatts of regen going in the battery um, on a few occasions going down some hills, you're not <laughs> you are gonna warm the battery up a little bit. And then as that heat soaks into the battery over the next you know, 10, 20 miles, I think that the rest of the efficiency you get 
thereafter has the compound effect of you rising the temperature of the battery initially. So yeah, I would find that a fascinating test um, to do. You know, I know people talk about is it best to be in coasting mode or level one, two or three regen and my testing showed there was very little difference in that. Uh, my driving style gave me the best results in regen level two, not coasting. But you know, some people would argue that the coasting mode is better because you've got less conversion of energy going in and out, the regen. But you know, we really don't know all of the performance characteristics of the regen capabilities of the Kona Electric, so we just don't quite know. It always makes you think, should we swap modes, should we try this, should we do this, that or the other? And the one that I would like to do is start off with you know, a full battery. Um, and then within the first miles, obviously not absolutely initially, because when it's 100% full, you can't regen more energy into it because it's already full. Um, so it'd be good to see whether you can increase the battery temperature in your driving style initially, but then slow down some um, after that, and then use that compound effect of the increased battery temperature to gain better efficiency. Anyway, I'm driving like Miss Daisy here now because I'm stuck behind a bus that doesn't want to do more than 17 miles an hour for some reason. And that reason seems to be because it doesn't fit on the road, so it's going really, really carefully. Right, anyway, um, I'll leave it there for the moment. That's the purpose of the test. That's what I'm doing. I'm out driving now. I have 62 miles of range left. Uh, I'm not going to tell you um, how many miles I've driven in total yet. I'll leave that for the end. But on this trip that I'm doing, um, I'm down to six miles per kilowatt hour now. So I've, I've just gone uphill from my lap of 6.2. So this is what I've got to contend with. 6.2 is going to be my average by the look of it at the moment, or, or more. But as I go up the hill, it goes, it goes down. I'm down to 5.9 miles per kilowatt hour now. Coming up to a 60 mile an hour speed limit. Yep, time to accelerate. I've got a car behind me, I don't want to hold up too much. But what I do want to do is keep it quite light and gentle so that uh, I'm not using too much energy because I, I, I do half, half want to get rid of all this energy fast to get this test over with because it's going to take a while otherwise. But these opportunities don't come along so often. Um, it's not that often that I have the opportunity to do a full to empty test and see what best range I can get and efficiency I can get. So I would be a fool now to ruin the numbers that I've got by um, racing at the last minute to the end. It would just be daft. Anyway, as I said, I'll sign off now and uh, edit some more bits of video later. So uh, 